Our first scripture reading, which will be in unison, is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who's been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Here is the reading. There we go. I'm on wireless five. Okay. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? All right. Names. Pastor Robin. Pastor Robin. Rock on. Rock on, Owen. All right. We've got Sam and Jack and Owen and Isa. And I know that I've asked your names before, but can you tell me your names, sweetheart? Sophia. Sophia. Wisdom. Sophia. That, your, na- your name means wisdom. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Sophia. Okay. Joshua. Joshua. Do you know that was, uh, your name actually means Jesus. Rock on. What's your name? Ben. Ben. Ben means child of my right hand, which is also my son's name. So I'm looking at Ben, Joshua, Sophia, Jeremiah, and Teresa. All right, cool. How's everybody this morning? All right, so today we are celebrating. Oh my gosh, I love your cat ears. Is that a Christmas present? I love it. Awesome. All right, so today we are celebrating gifts being given, right? And remember, we have our little secret down here. We have our nativity set going on. Now, Help me name the... Can you see? Yeah, do you want to come over here? You want, to, want to sit right in front and we can do this? All right, so let's look. Who's who? All right, so this is Mary, Mary with baby Jesus, Joseph, Joseph and a bunch of animals, shepherds. an angel. angel. Who are these three? Shepherds? No, the shepherds. Look over there at that window. The shepherds are over there. They have come and gone at this point. These three have just arrived. They are the three... Prayers? Um, prayers? prayers? Look, that does look like they're praying, right? They are. The, we call them uh, the three kings or three magi or three wise ones. Yes. Wise ones. Wise ones. Wise people. Okay. That one is the camel. And that's a camel. Yep. And they come bringing gifts for for baby Jesus. And we just sang it in the song. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay. Can I can I just scoot back to the yes? What is frankincense? Frankincense is like an it's an incense. Have you ever um it they burn it and it and it, it has a smell. Let's move back up to the pew. Um Thank you for coming over. Um, it's, it's used in worship in, in some uh, different traditions. They will, they will use incense. 
and uh, and myrrh is something. It has different uses. So I'm going to talk about this more with uh, with your adults later. But um, it was it, it very smelly, um, and it had a medicinal quality to it. And they would use it when uh, for when when they would bury people. Not really. So. But I want to focus on that they brought gifts. If you had to bring a gift to someone who was going to be the king, right, what would you bring? A crown. A crown. Okay. Owen? Jesus. You would, okay, you're bringing the gifts. To, okay, that's really good because we're bringing a gift to Jesus. Right? Who would be king? Who is like? Who is also? Yes, Benjamin. Advice if you were king. Say that again. Advice if you were king. Advice if you were king, you would give. Oh, like like. Hey, this. Do this. This tips about how to be king. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's a great thing, Isa. You would give him what? To give him supplies for his speeches. That's pretty cool. Wow. I, I came in knowing that I was going to be surprised by your answers. I think that's really, really cool. One more. Yes, Jack. A staff. A staff. Like, 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 like a wooden staff or like people to help him? Like a staff. Like we, a wooden staff. A wooden staff. Okay. Very, very cool. So... One of my well, I want to sh- I want to share with you some gifts that I got for, for um, for Christmas, from my kids, um, which you can tell I used this morning, right? That's my coffee this morning, um, which showed to me that they that they know me, right? Did you get a gift where you just like, aw, I love that, and I felt known by giving by. By the gifts that they got, because they. So this is. Who's on that? What is? What's on that? You see a mermaid, right? And it was so funny because I was in the store and I looked at it. It's it's Starbucks. It's in Starbucks. And I'm like, oh. And I was with my daughter. I'm like, oh, look at that. Isn't that sweet? And my daughter <laughs> had said, had said, you know, I saw that and I thought of you. And in my mind, I'm, I thought I'm going to get that for Christmas, and I did. Right, and then this one came from my son, and it's a line from one of my favorite movies, *Howl's Moving Castle*, by Hayao Miyazaki. If, and if you're not adults, if you don't know the Hayao Miyazaki movies, they're awesome. It's Japanese Disney, but better. Anyway, and this is um, it's a heart's a heavy burden is one of my favorite lines. And my son, um, when I got this, I'm like, oh, he goes, he goes, whenever they say that line, mom, you go, you say it out loud again and sigh. And, he, and, I, and I felt very loved and known by that. So Jesus, his mission is to show us how much God loves us, right? That's Jesus, who is king, who is God, his one mission is to show us how much God loves us and would do anything for us. Yes? You can tell I really like the color blue. You can tell I really like the color blue? I do like the color blue. Not my favorite color, though. Guess what my favorite color is? Turquoise? Yellow? Green. Green, green, green. But I do like blue. All right, so this... One of my favorite Christmas hymns is, and it's, and it's its last, it's its last verse that always gets me, and it's about what do we bring to God? What do we bring to Jesus? It's in the bleak midwinter. It's the last verse of it, and it says, "What can I give him? Poor as I am, if I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. What? If I were a wise man, I would do my part. But what can I give him?" Adults, give him my heart. Give him my heart. So the best gift, I mean, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, awesome, right? But the best gift that we can give to Jesus and to God is our love and to love God back. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes, Owen. Every 
Look, he's looking up at a star. He's following the star to, to Bethlehem to find Jesus. You all are going to go out to Sunday school with Mrs. Walsh in a second, but let's say a prayer first. Fold our hands, close our eyes, bow our heads. Gracious God, thank you for loving us. Lord, we seek to love you with all that we say and do. Thank you for Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Our second scripture lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear, appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the, sh of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Boy Scout troop in my former church in Wharton did the pilgrimage to Philmont in New Mexico, which is this really big Boy Scout camp, and it's a big deal. And they had a presentation about their time, and we were invited as a sponsoring church for their organization. And you could tell that the troop leader, the adult, had an absolute spiritual experience on this trip. And he shared one profound experience laying out under the stars in, in, with a cloudless night in an arid climate. And he had one of those moments w of mystical connection where you feel connected to everything and everyone and he was transformed, and it was his joy to share about this experience with all of us. Walt Whitman wrote a poem, When I Heard the Learned Astronomer, about his experience looking at the stars. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures, were ranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and the diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I, sitting, heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick, till rising and gliding out I wandered off by myself in the mystical, moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. Imagine yourself out under the stars for a moment looking up, laid before you like a work of art that speaks to your soul. The heavens have a message for you. And now let's look down at the book before us, at scripture. There's a lot of fun things happening in the scripture passage. Matthew is trying to paint Jesus as the new Moses. Moses saved the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Jesus saves all humankind. Herod is like Pharaoh, killing babies. Remember, Moses was put in a basket by his mother who couldn't stand the idea of him being slaughtered. Jesus and family flee to Egypt to avoid the killing of the innocent, the Israelite babies by Herod. What Matthew is trying to communicate to his audience, Jewish people of faith, 
Jesus is the real deal. He's, he's just like Moses, but even greater. We have visitors from the east, about which we have all sorts of fun traditions. How many were there? We don't know. We say three because there were three gifts, but we don't know. Where were they from? The east. That's all we know. Do we know their names? No. From a wide assortment of names suggested for the Magi, the ones that have prevailed are Gaspar or Casper, Melchior and Balthazar. How many people knew that? Yeah, right? Okay. I think that'd be a great Jeopardy final question. <laughs> Category, Christian Midrash. And the answer, and what would be fabulous like with the kids, um, what the, the answer could be, who were the wise men? Who were the Magi? Who were the kings, the three kings? And they would all be right. And this is a total aside, but did you know there was a recent Jeopardy controversy on my, in my social media? Presbyterians were up in arms. This was the clue. Paul's letter to them in the New Testament epistle with the most Old Testament quotations. Answer is? The winning answer was Hebrews, but the Presbyterians, you know, were up in arms. Hebrews was not written by Paul. It's pseudo-Paul. You know, it's second Deutero-Paul. It's right. And, and the other thing I would say, it's not even a letter. It's a long sermon. So, you know, but anyway, my, my social media blew up about that. And we teased ourselves about being that geeky around it. Anyway, were they kings? No. Where, do we, where does that come from? From that Isaiah passage that we just read, we glom those together. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Were they wise? <laughs> we'll come back to that. The term magi, mostly used in a negative sense in, in, the, in the New Testament and Acts, they were most likely astrologers, probably Zoroastrian, an ancient religion whose adherents followed the teachings of Zoroaster. And why gold, frankincense, and myrrh? From Isaiah, we just read, they shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. No myrrh in, us, in Isaiah? Nope. You've probably heard it explained that the gifts symbolize different things. We just, in the song, that we three kings of Orient are, they have it there. Gold fit for a king. Frankincense is used in worship, like incense. So it would be a, a gift for, for a priest, for a religious leader. And myrrh was used for embalming bodies, foreshadowing Jesus' death. In the year 248, Origen, who is an early Christian scholar and theologian, wrote, gold as to a king, myrrh as to one who is mortal, and incense as to a god. But I just heard, and I like this too, what if they were a gift to Mary? Gold, because kids are expensive. Frankincense and myrrh. Frankincense has a calming effect. Myrrh is used even today for the healing of wounds. The resins from frankincense are myrrh and myrrh are highly anti-inflammatory, and myrrh resins enhance blood clotting and would reduce postpartum bleeding. Isn't that cool? Was it a star or a comet? Could have been either. Comets were seen as the heavens choosing a new ruler. Very Roman and Hellenistic in thought. Many of the Roman emperor's births were heralded by comets, August, Augustus Caesar and Nero. Now here's the question about their wisdom. How wise is it to go to the, the sitting king and say, hey, we notice that the heavens are picking a new king. Because Herod was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Why were they disturbed? Because what happens when kings are bothered, paranoid, afraid of losing position, unwilling to give up power? People die. That's why all Jerusalem was worried. What was Herod's guiding star? Power, position, privilege. And he would do anything to protect it, even killing babies. 
That's not such a fun fact, but it's true. So now we move into what does this text ask of us? I mean, there's many questions, but this is a good one. What is your guiding star? And it's also your homework to sit with that question. What is your guiding star? Some churches do a thing. I've, I've heard of this for years, but I've never done it. On Epiphany Sunday, they will do star words. Have you ever done that here? They'll cut out stars. I'm, see, I'm looking at quizzical faces. They'll cut out like uh, stars, and they'll write words on it. Could be words, words that will be your word for the year to ponder on, to, to think. Could be courage. Could be grace. Could be forgiveness. Could be peace. Could be justice. But, and they're given out randomly. They're either put in the bulletins or in a, in a basket for people to pick out, and they'll say, it's your star word for the year. I, obviously we're not doing that, but my question, or the star word that I would have for us, the, to, the word to sit with is willingness. What are you willing to do, to give, how do you respond to God's love in your life? More homework. That's a personal question. But I also want to take a step back and, and ask this question of us as a community. What is our guiding star? The discernment team that was tasked with coming together to listen to you and to listen to the spirit to discern what is the mission and the vision of the church moving forward came up with the following statement which you will have a chance to affirm at a congregational meeting at the end of the month grace presbyterian church connecting with people listening to you belonging community, welcome, were words that we heard again and again and again. Connecting with people through Christ. This is a Christian organization. This is a Christian church. It's important to identify ourselves as such. To serve. I've heard, I can't get this refrain out of my head listening to another pastor saying, you know, saved people serve. We are called to serve connecting with people through Christ to serve the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of the community. Physical, Matthew 25, when you see somebody, you know, when there's, somebody's hungry, give them food. When they're thirsty, give them something to drink. When they have no clothing, clothe them. You know, visit and those who are sick and in prison, welcome the stranger, Vis meet, serve the physical needs of people, emotional needs. Gosh, our world, our community needs a lot of emotional healing, with the trauma that we have been through, with all of us in our different levels of, of maturity from young people to old, we're already doing, uh, in a second, we're already doing some of this, but emotional healing, yes, amen. And then spiritual needs. It's our spiritual truth, faith, God's presence in our lives that have seen us through. That is the greatest gift that we can give to other people, the knowledge that God is and that God is with them. And we do this in myriad ways. And, okay, to serve the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of the community, and we could just say, oh, that's just us in-house, but no. The church was planted in this community to serve the larger community. And we're very clear about that when we say, and the world around us. And that's part of who you are as well. This church has a, a long heritage in being uh, with missionaries to not just to your local community, but to the larger community. So now I'm going to say the whole mission, vision, mission statement again without pausing. Grace Presbyterian Church, connecting with people through Christ to serve the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of the community and the world around us. A guiding star. We're already living this out in some ways. Uh, a feeding ministry, yes, 
physical needs, emotional needs. We have a we just started in recent months a caregivers group, a grief group. Uh, someone has uh, has brought up the idea of starting a group for folks who have in in their families uh, folks with mental illness and how to support one another through that. Spiritual needs. Oh my goodness. From, from these little ones in the Sunday school to the men's breakfast to the women's book group to the everyday daily devotional online to Norma's Bible study to all these different the ways that we pray for one another, uh, the, the prayer chain, all, all of these different things that we already do. At the end of the month at the congregational meeting, you'll have an opportunity to affirm yes, yes to that as a mission statement. But not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, the 21st, we're going to gather here in the fellowship hall to put meat on the bones of that mission statement. It will be successful if at the end of the morning we have two or three things that we would like to set as goals for 2023 to live that mission statement out. And it, you know, I would say either doubling down on what we're already doing and how, how is the spirit leading us to be doing uh, more or in down the road or this year or in, um, I, you know, I have a thousand and ten ideas that you could be living in. I'm, you know, I've always said I'm the queen of ideas, but I always need somebody to, you know, to, to, to help and, okay, I, you know, I'll do that with you. And we'll know when we have it when people are like, I love that idea. I'm willing to run with it. I'm willing to help. I'll, I will show up, all of that. And you have a lot of heads in the room going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you're excited about it, and there's energy around it. And I think um, this Saturday could be a really, ex not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, the 21st, could be just an exciting time to, to dream dreams. And what do we want to do in the name of Jesus to bless the world through Grace Presbyterian Church? I've already heard uh, the ideas lifted up about doing a mission trip. I heard ideas of again about that support group. Uh, you know, I have you know, I I could go on. I well, I you'll have to come on that Saturday for me to tell you what I think a fabulous idea for you all to do. But it's who you are, and I could bless the community. Uh, how is the spirit calling us to move, and what are you willing to give of our time and our energy? What is your guiding star? What are you willing to give? When God calls, this is the only reason that I'm in ministry, if, because God has promised to be with. I don't call you to do something and then abandon you to do it on your own. I will be with you. It's the only reason I said yes. The spirit is alive and well and continues to whisper. Enough whispers sounds like a shout. What is the spirit whispering to us? With the confidence that God will enable us to do it. In Jesus' name. Amen.